good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. I think most everyone knows me, but if not, my name's Ryan Strong. I'm the chief of police. Just a little bit about me, in case anybody's curious. I worked at the Wayne Police Department for 20 years. Uh, I grew up in Birch Run, Michigan. Um, ended up down here in Metro Detroit and fell in love with it, fell in love with the department. I'm happy to be here. I intend to finish my career here. Uh, I've been married to my wife, Julie, for 16 years. We have two children, Sean and Shannon, and uh, just at a good point in my life, so thank you. Um, these police community meetings, I intend to keep doing them quarterly, um, so here we are tonight. Um, we'll just go ahead and get started then. Um, so some personal updates. We've got some great personal updates. As I'm sure everyone knows, we've dealt with uh, severe staffing shortages over the years. Um, we just have two officers who got done with their uh, training program, officers Marcian and Williams, and uh, they're out on their own now working. In fact, if anybody saw on our Facebook page today, Officer Marcian stopped by uh, Taft Elementary today and visited with some uh, children on some of our walkthroughs. We try to have our officers frequently walk through the schools, and they got to meet with some kids, and he and Officer Bolton uh, even uh, hit the swings and slides with the kids, so they had a great time. But anyway, both officers, Marcy and Williams, are doing great so far. We also have two officers in the academy. They're going to graduate from the academy in May, and then they'll start their four-month training program, and then they'll be off on their own. Um, there's uh, Officer Preeb and Officer McCartney. Officer McCartney grew up here in Wayne, and Officer uh, Preeb has some connections in the area. I'll add that Officer uh, Preeb was uh, nominated as uh, captain of the police academy. That's um, You are elected that amongst your peers, so it's good to hear that one of our future officers has the respect of his peers like that. So neighborhood watch update. I'm sure most people are aware that we have a neighborhood watch patrol here in Wayne. Uh, I'm the type of guy I don't want to lift, look a gift horse in the mouth, so we have some citizens here who are uh, ready and willing to volunteer in the community, look for safety issues and report them to the police. And I, for one, am very grateful for their assistance. And uh, I've been meeting with them on a regular basis since I've become police chief and uh, you know, giving them information to kind of help them look for crime hotspots, times and days. And um, they've shared some important information with me. And uh, so tonight we have Bern Amos, who's with the Neighborhood Watch Patrol. Uh, he's a great friend of the police department in the city. And he's just going to give us a quick little update on Neighborhood Watch Patrol, maybe some ideas he has for how to keep the community safe. So here's Mr. Amos. Good evening, folks. Uh, for those that don't know me, I am Vern Amos. Um, I am one of the lead drivers on the Neighborhood Patrol, along with Chris Miller that's sitting here in the audience. Um, we uh, are a totally volunteer group. Um, we patrol periodically, days and nights. Um, we, just, we just got a new member or a new volunteer uh, the other day and she went through the training and the background check and hopefully uh, is going to continue to patrol on a regular basis like the rest of us. We patrol with um, the neighborhood insignia on our door panels and we also are authorized now for a yellow flashing light on the top of our vehicles. Um, we are the eyes and ears for the police department only. We do not enforce anything. We do not get out of the car. We are simply just eyes and ears. We see something suspicious, we call the police department immediately and try to get them out there to assist in what may be going on, whether it's a car break-in or a house break-in or just general vandalism in the neighborhood. Um, and that's basically how we work. We're always looking for more volunteers. Um, we use our own vehicles. We pay for our own gas. We pay for our own equipment. But we're out there to try to help the neighborhood and the community be safer and hopefully scare the boogeyman off. So I had a bunch of these printed up, these flyers, that kind of give you some ideas on how to make your homes safer. There are some here in the lobby at City Hall and I will be dropping some off at the police station that uh, if you're interested please pick them up. But uh, you, you as citizens can really help one another out by if you see suspicious activity in your neighborhoods to call the non-emergency number at the police station and let them know. 
also it would help us as patrol people uh, a lot if you'd turn your porch lights on at night some of these streets are so dark it's really hard to see around your bushes and cars and stuff where these uh, people like to hide when they're trying to hide from us so please turn those porch lights on thank you have a good evening Thanks, Mr. Amos. Uh, so that flyer they made up, a lot of outstanding safety tips on there. In fact, we posted it on the police department's Facebook page and someone commented, well, that's all common sense stuff. Well, like my grandpa used to say, common sense isn't always so common. So um, there's some great safety tips. If you haven't looked at the uh, flyer, um, there's some up here at City Hall and it's posted our, uh, on our Facebook page. I can tell you if everyone did those tips, we'd be a lot less busy at the police department. Um, so. I know it's kind of wrapping up the uh, snow season, uh, although I did see a weather report that it might snow snow this weekend. So just a little bit about our enforcement strategy for snow emergencies. Um, you know, if, if you, you think it's gonna snow or there's heavy snow, don't wait till you find out that we called a snow emergency. Just get your vehicle off the street. It makes the DPW's job a lot easier. And if you do leave it on the street during a snow emergency, unfortunately, we're gonna have to ticket you and possibly tow. So just a little on that. Um, so some recent cases, um, so I was speaking to uh, our detective, Detective Perez, before this meeting, and uh, he mentioned this fraud case he was dealing with recently. He um, was an elderly resident in our, our city who was um, defrauded out of nearly $10,000, um, so, which is obviously terrible. Um, and and you, sometimes you hear about these fraud cases and you, you think, well, you know what, I would never do that. You know, I'm smarter than that. I wouldn't fall for that. When this case, it, it's a bit unclear how it even started. So this resident was actually smart enough. She was really check, checking her um, monthly bills from her bank, and she noticed some unusual charges. I think like most people, we have a lot of stuff on automatic payment, you know, our cell phone bill, electrical bill, maybe even mortgage payment. So maybe you might not check your bank account statement frequently because it's all done for us. Well, I, I mean, personally, I, I check my bank account statement at least once a week just for this very reason. Um, and that's what happens. Someone had somehow got our account information and started automatically taking things out. And what these fraudsters do is, you know, when you on those, you know, this itemized list, it says what they are. Well, they will put, they will make the charge sound like something halfway reasonable. It'll like maybe have the word Verizon in it, even though it's not really Verizon, or it'll have, you know, U.S. Bank or whatever in the name somehow. But it's actually just a scam. So thankfully, this resident discovered before it got, it got too out of control, and her bank did work with her. But again, just check those bank, bank statements very frequently. Again, at, at the very least, once a week. Um, I'm sure most people heard about the uh, motorcycle tra uh, crash we had yesterday. Um, well, there was a motorcycle crash yesterday between a motorcycle and a car. I don't want to comment too further. Um, the, as far as the, you know, the driver's condition. Um, but just now that we're getting to warmer weather, just keep an extra eye out for those motorcycles. Like those bumper stickers say, you know, look twice, save a life. Um, just keep an extra eye out. Those motorcycles are out and about, you know, before you make lane changes, before you turn left. That's a big one over my career, the motorcycle crashes where a uh, vehicle is turning left, they don't see the motorcycle, and you know, unfortunately it doesn't go well for the motorcyclist. So just pay some extra attention. Um, other crime updates, Mr. Amos kind of talked about if you see something suspicious, call. And it's kind of like that saying, if you see something, say something. Um, let us know. I mean, you, you folks who live in the neighborhoods, you know what's out of place in your neighborhood. So if you see something unusual, call us. Um, as an example, last year um, there was a uh, break-in in, in, uh, in Glenwood Heights there. and. Um, Neighbor called us and said, hey, our neighbors dismiss, they're on vacation, and I see a car in the driveway, and they said no one was supposed to be home. We went there, and sure enough, someone was in the middle of breaking into the house. <laughs> we caught them red-handed. So just a simple phone call like that takes 10, 15 seconds, you could be helping someone out. So again, if you see something, say something. Um, so traffic crashes, um, we, if for those, I mean, now that it's televised, I'm sure this is some new information for everybody. Um, but with our Clemis, it's called Clemis, our computer system, um, we're able to do what's called crime mapping. You'll see a few examples of them. It's beneficial for citizens to see what's going on. As I said, I share some of that information with Neighborhood Watch when appropriate. It's also good for our officers um, so they can see what's going on in the community. 
Um, but this here is traffic crashes. It's kind of what you would expect. You see quite a, quite a bit along Michigan Avenue here, um, Van Boren here, Wayne Road. Um, property offenses, that's um, people stealing your stuff, breaking into sheds, breaking into your car, breaking into your house, that kind of thing. Um, so the blue is more, where there was more than one incident occurred. Um, this is the, these are all pat, the past 30 days. Um, so crimes against people. Um, that's a wide variety of things, but you know, assaults, unarmed robbery, that type of thing. So unfortunately, there's quite a few, as you can see in the see, see there. Um, you know, they're highlighted in the residential areas, as you would imagine. Um, crimes against society. Um, those are things like, um, you know, drinking in public, disorderly conduct, things like that. Um, things that like bother your neighbors, that type of crime. Um, suspicious activity, those would be the things where like maybe the folks at the neighborhood watch might give us a call and say, um, hey, there's somebody trying car door handles in the neighborhoods, um, or your neighbor calls and says, hey, there's something out of place here. That's that, what we have there. Um, speaking of car door handles, I could say this till I'm out of breath, but lock your cars, your car doors. I, I don't care if there, you know, there's nothing valuable in it. You know, you could have somebody damage your car, take your spare change, whatever. Lock your car doors. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, that's it for that. Um, any questions? How yeah. Sure. Um, so the question is, how do these numbers compare to last year? I, I would say for this time period, they're pretty similar. Um, but just following up on that. As the weather warms up, you know we're, we're, we're more likely going to see more of these, like the crimes against uh, society here, where you have people like you know drinking in public or being disorderly. Things like that tend, tend to warm up, uh, heat up when the, the weather warms up. Yes. Sure. So the question was about uh, mental health issues. Um, so yes. We absolutely run across people with mental health issues, and um, we recently were just talking about that um, at the police department. Um, obviously, when run into uh, people who have mental health issues, um, you know, we, we don't want them to fall into the criminal justice system if needed. Um, so we've been working with um, several different avenues to, so for instance, uh, Cope in Livonia, which is a mental health facility, um, kind of following up on that. Um, when people don't need to get into the criminal justice system, we'll do our best. We recently um, partnered with Hope Not Handcuffs. Um, that's a program where um, someone who has a drug addiction problem, they can come into the police department and rather, rather than deal with the police, um, we'll contact this Hope Not Handcuffs program and they'll send someone out to the police department and get them to a rehab center. Um, we're working with them. They don't really have quite enough volunteers that we're able to proceed with the program right now, but probably a couple months when they have enough volunteers built up. Yes. Last year, when we were doing the slides, was that from narcotics? Um, I, I just chose to highlight these. There, there, there's no particular reason I didn't bring those up. So. And then one other point was um, you mentioned motorcycle accidents. I've seen a lot of accidents lately with people crashing into things. Sure. So the so the question was about crashes. Um, you know, we had a recent motorcycle accident that I mentioned, um, and pedestrian crashes. Um, to follow up on that, I would say please use crosswalks. Um, unfortunately, I've seen some very bad pedestrian crashes. Um, you know, a car versus a pedestrian, you know, it's never going to go well. So, you know, use a crosswalk, even if you have to walk that extra block or two. Um, when Just be particular in residential areas, pay extra attention for the uh, pedestrians when you're out driving, because, you know, it's not going to go well. So just pay extra attention, particularly when the weather's warming up. We're going to see more bicyclists, more motorists, more pedestrians, those types of things. Any other questions? Yes. They came across that last Friday, the, the, the guy riding the bike over there. Yes. Not too far from CLS. And it was, when you hit that corner, this person jumped right out of the traffic and I went to Yep. Un un unfortunately. The heck out of it. So the question was about. Um, sure. So the question was about. Um, East Michigan Avenue near Pershing, near Westchester Towers. So obviously it's a residential area, it's a high-rise apartment complex. You have a lot of people coming and going. If you're a motorist in the area, I'd strongly urge you to use caution. We've had some very unfortunate traffic crashes there. And if you're a resident there, 
please use the crosswalks. I know you need to walk all the way down to Elizabeth, but it's going to take a minute or two. So just just be careful. So, yes. So, hold on. so the, the TV can't hear you, so let me repeat what you're say, saying a little bit. Um, so Ms. Brock mentioned um, Hope Not Handcuffs, which I mentioned that we're, we're looking to get into in the next couple of months. They're part of Families Against Narcotics, and uh, they're having a meeting on April 1st at Summit Place. That, in Canton. Summit Place. Summit Place. So, in, yep. And um, so, yep, so April 1st. Um, they have a website as well, Families Against Narcotics, Metro Detroit. Um, any other questions? Okay. Well, anybody who's ever met me knows I like to keep meetings short and sweet, so here we are. Um, if anybody wishes to speak to me afterwards, I'll be happy to stick around. And uh, our next meeting will be in June. Uh, we hope to, you know, have it televised as well. So I think it worked out well so far. We'll, ha we'll have this uh, posted shortly as well. Oh, one more question before we wrap up. Can yes. I have a question I have for Tommy. Okay. Um, it's about the neighborhood lot. Okay. Okay, so so we had a com we had a compliment about Mr. Amos and all the hard work he puts in in the neighborhood watch. Sure, and Mr. Miller as well. Okay, all right. Well, Ms. Rockwell, just thank Mr. Miller and uh, Mr. Amos for their hard work, and I, I certainly appreciate them as well. Any other questions? Excellent. Well, thanks everybody for coming, and we'll see you in June.